G'day everybody, Andy here. After doing some modifications to my Brian Moore custom guitar, putting some new pickups in, taking a few things out, like the uh, USB port that was in there, because I didn't really use it, uh, I've, uh, I've generated some noise, some serious uh, ground issues with my guitar. So I've done a lot of research and I've hopefully come up with some answers that I'll be fixing in the n next few days. So I had a look at a lot of websites and uh, a lot of websites mentioned that I should probably shield my guitar. And there's a couple of main ways. The, uh, what, what shielding is, is putting uh, copper tape or conductive shielding paint into the cavities of your guitar. Uh, like a pickup cavity, control cavity, or spring claw cavity. So that's what I'll do over the next couple of days. Um, I'll just demonstrate what sort of ground noise I'm talking about. So the guitar's off at the moment and I'll turn the guitar on right now. Okay, I've turned the guitar on, so I'm pretty high gain. You can probably hear a little bit of noise there. Okay, I've got it in a humbucker position and I'll turn it up. A little bit more noise. Take my fingers off the strings. You can hear a little bit of noise. You know. It's probably, uh, it's probably within the boundaries of what a guitar does. But if I change it to a single chord position, you can hear my problem. So I'll go through the single chord positions. There's a single coil. That's actually another humbucker position. Single coil. Humbucker. Single coil. And uh, you understand what I'm talking about, so you understand the need to address this pretty soon because I can't go on stage with that much noise. Anyway, so first thing to do is get out there, get to the workbench, and start shielding. <laughs> This guitar used to have PSO pickups and synthesizer capabilities with the USB and synthesizer output. But I've since removed all of that, so we don't have that anymore. What I've done is I've put a humbucker here, single coil and a humbucker, with a coil cut switch for both the humbuckers. But what I'm going to do, I think, is to move this humbucker over so we get more of a strat sound and maybe eventually put a Fernandez sustainer pickup in there next to it. And a phase switch here for the middle coil pickup. So if I think about it, between that and a phase switch and this five way, we should be able to get 14 sounds out of this guitar. Okay, first things first, uh, because we're going to take this guitar entirely apart, is to measure with our Stumac string gauge and to take some notes. So I've already uh, had a bit of a measure. And what I've measured at the low E string we have uh, from the 12th fret, 2 millimeters, and I've done this before, so uh, we've got 1.5 millimeters there. The front pickup here, if I turn the string gauge around, we've got 3 millimeters, and 3 millimeters, and the back pickup, we've got 2.5 millimeters, and 2.5 millimeters. Now that we've done our measuring, time to take this apart and we'll uh, clean out the cavities so that paint can adhere to it and we we'll, and so that copper tape can also adhere to it. And how I'll do that is with the Dremel stylus with a bit of a sanding bit on it and I'll clean it all up and rough it all up. Okay, I've removed all the components and I've uh, revealed serial number here which is 63278 and someone's signature. Now I'm sorry to the artist that made this guitar but I'm going to alter it forever again by sanding in here. So we don't have any conductive paint or coil, uh, copper tape in here so I'll maybe put one or both in there. Haven't really decided yet. And if we turn it over you can see more varnish so I'll have to take that away with sanding for the paint. And in here is the interesting part. We have copper and we have conductive paint. And if I grab my trusty multimeter, the copper is conductive. The paint is 
not so much and definitely not conductive to the copper now I may have um, accidentally ruined that myself in a previous upgrade but anyway I think I'll sand this out and uh, put some more paint on there as well and I've noticed there's a couple of holes I need to plug so I bought some putty and hopefully that's a similar colour because I'm going to plug some the holes here with the putty and one or so in the back here okay time to do some sanding and the Dremel I bought didn't quite work out it uh, wasn't fit for purpose it wasn't tough enough so I bought a couple of sanding discs so time to go Welcome to day two of shielding my electric guitar. Okay, as you can see, I sanded out the cavities here and in the back and taped it all up pretty well with uh, blue masking tape. Okay, so I've sanded in there, in here, sanded a bit of the, uh, bit of the uh, conductive paint, taped it up and plugged up some holes. As you can see, I've puttied these two holes here. Not the best job in the world, but not the worst either. That'll do. Now, to uh, paint the cavities, there's two things I have to do. I have to paint some of the brush. So I'll use this brush for the main parts. But for the actual cavity holes, I'm going to have to get down there with a pipe cleaner. Like so. So let's try that first. And so here we go, and I hear this stuff is very uh, sticky, so we have to be careful. But that is working out well already. So this is the first paint I've applied, and it says on the can to apply three coats, so that I'll do. And just to demonstrate, I will just paint a little in here. And it does go on very well. A nice and thin coat, which is the way I wanted it. So that's great. So this might take me 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And after it, I should have uh, the cavities nice and black. And I'll wait for it to dry. Maybe a day like they say on the can, and I'll give it another go. And then we'll test the conductivity, and then we'll put some copper tape on there as well, possibly.
Okay, now it's three days later and you can see that I've painted all the insides here. So three days because it's three coats and I allowed a day to dry between coats. Uh, what are my thoughts? It's a really fiddly dirty job, especially on this guitar because it has a cavity in there. So what I eventually did, instead of a paintbrush, I got a rubber glove, stuck my finger into the paint and painted with my finger, which seems to work seems to have worked out well. Um, I, my thoughts on the paint are, well, I think that copper tape could do everything that paint does, but paint doesn't do everything that copper tape does. And I'll give you one example. You'll see that copper tape is absolutely conductive. That's my probes, I covered them with paint. Um, but the paint isn't. So if we get my probes for the paint, there is resistance there. So if I go to 200 ohms, 2K, you should be able to do better than that. So what's going on? There you go. So it's not totally conductive like the tape is. Apart from, I notice one part here. Is it there? There we go. That's the paint being totally conductive. But it doesn't happen everywhere. So the only thing to do is cover it in tape. Which is what I'll do. I filled all the cavities of the guitar with the copper tape, as you can see, here, 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 and if I turn it over, all here too, and here as well, uh, and put it on the lip there, so that the back of the plates will connect there, as you can see and hear, very conductive stuff, although the back part is not physically connected, 
to these parts here. So what I'm planning to do is to connect them with a wire through the channel. And if you can see that, there's actually a guitar string there. I hope you can see that on the video. So I've already connected the guitar string here and taped it down with copper. I haven't soldered it, I've only taped it down and I'll tape it down on this end as well. So there we have our guitar string. Here's a bit of copper tape. And I'll uh, get the backing off the copper tape. Which is not always the easiest thing to do. So there's some copper tape tape down our guitar string, completely cover it, press it down, and the way I prefer to press it down is with the eraser on the back of a pencil, like that. So now you can see the string underneath the copper tape just there. Other ways to press this down is with a rag like so, and now we should have connectivity or conductivity from there through to the back, so there and excellent. So what I'll do, I'll put guitar strings through there in the same manner and they'll come out through that hole and through that hole and I'll tape them down the same way that I've taped it there and there and then all three pickup cavities are connected to the control panel cavities. Okay so now I've painted the inside of my guitar with the conductive paint I've put copper tape inside and I've rewired the guitar uh, the rewiring went really well, although I'm not great at it, but I now have a core cut switch and the phase switch, so I can get 14 uh, configurations of my pickups, which I'm very happy about, and this guitar sounds fantastic. But what about the noise? The reason I did this in the first place, well, as you can hear in that humbucker position, No noise, another humbucker position, less noise than before, but the single coils. No noise, single coil there, tiny bit. another single coil position. This one. So, I actually did it. Uh, all the hard work and research paid off and I now have a guitar that's very, very, very low noise. So I really recommend the copper tape. I probably won't use the shielding paint again. Mainly because it's too messy and you don't do the backs of your covers the insides of the backs of the covers with uh, shielding paint, you're doing with copper tape. So if you're doing that with copper tape, you might as well do everything with a copper tape. Um, so, I'm very happy with it and very happy with uh, the time of delivery of the Stu Mac products. I live in Australia, they were here in days from USA. So. <laughs> very happy.